Effectively cooling a data center is one of the most challenging issues a data center manager may face. Let's take a look at a common scenario where data center cooling degrades over time, then a best practice solution that can be implemented in stages to keep cooling predictable and the data center manager in control. Our data center manager starts with a 160 kilowatt cooling requirement, averaging 1.5 kilowatts per rack. He arranges the room in a hot, cold aisle configuration with four air conditioning units at the end of the hot aisles for optimal cooling. Within a few months, the data center manager notices that there are some spots in the data center with slightly varying temperatures due to a less than optimal floor tile arrangement. To remedy this, he rearranges the tiles, moving perforated tiles to only the cold aisle and directly in front of the racks. Six months later, it's time for an IT refresh. Newer, more dense, and more compact equipment is installed. Each device generates nearly the same heat as the old equipment. However, the racks now hold more equipment, so the overall amount of heat produced increases. This creates localized hotspots around the data center. This also changes the airflow of the room by stealing air from neighboring racks with lower densities. To counter this, the data center manager redistributes the newer, denser equipment across several racks. Six months later, and it's time for another IT refresh. Even more equipment is added, leading to higher power densities as well as cable congestion from additional network drops and power cords. Air recirculation increases. Because the new, denser servers cannot draw the necessary airflow from the raised flooring for proper cooling, they must pull the required air from another source. The air temperature across the entire room also begins to rise. As more heat is generated, the curtain of hot air at the top of the room is lowered closer to the rack inlet. The cooling situation in the data center becomes critical. Over the next year, the data center manager makes several attempts to correct it. The first thing he tries to do is add cooling capacity. Unfortunately, while this adds cooling capacity, it does not fix the problem, which is one of air distribution. The increased cooling capacity in the room lowers the return temperature to the cracks, resulting in an overall reduction in capacity from the cracks. The data center manager then tries to make the room colder by lowering the set point. This too does not address the problem of air distribution. In fact, lowering the set point actually decreases the cooling capacity further. Air conditioning units work most efficiently when receiving higher return air temperatures. The data center manager tries to deal with the problem by replacing the tiles. To make perforated holes larger, he changes out some of the standard floor tiles with 56% free perforated tiles. This causes a drop in air pressure and non-uniform airflow that, in turn, creates unpredictable airflow patterns. Even more hot spots form due to the reduction of airflow in some areas. The data center manager tries plugging up cable access holes with brush strips. Unfortunately, this only has a slight impact on the problem. It is now two years after the initial data center installation. The data center manager begins to implement, in stages, a best practice solution. He reconfigures two of the four rows in the data center for in-row cooling. Four legacy crack units are removed and three Network Air IR units are installed. In-row cooling not only shortens the path between the hot air and the heat removal device, it also removes from the cooling equation the unpredictable nature of cold air delivery. Now there are seven air conditioning units instead of eight, 20% more cooling capacity in the converted rows, and less humidification required. During the second stage of implementation, the data center manager repeats this same step for the remaining two rows. This net result is six air conditioning units instead of eight, 20% more cooling capacity per row, and a predictable cooling architecture. The final step in this best practice solution is the addition of a hot aisle containment system for areas of the data center supporting high density applications. Sealing the hot aisle off from the rest of the room ensures that the hot air will not mix with the supply air. Now the cluster of high density racks can be environmentally controlled separately. This decreases the amount of energy the system uses and allows the cooling system to be run at its full capacity. While effectively cooling high density environments is challenging, APC can help you increase data center availability and decrease your total cost of ownership through proper cooling methodologies.
Infrastructure architecture is a standardized, open building block approach that keeps data center cooling predictable and the data center manager in control in both new and existing data centers. For more information, please visit us today at www.apc.com.